And the reticular formation. So, what's the reticular formation? The reticular formation is the part of your brainstem that's not a discrete nuclei or a tract. It's basically everything else. So this is the thing when you get excited that makes your heart rate go up or your respiratory rate go up because things in there are like the um, vagal nerve centers, okay, which can, can control contractility of the heart to some. The apneustic and pneumotaxic centers, which have to do with depth and volume of respiration. The vomiting center, which controls puking, of course. The micturition center, which controls peeing, okay, and a bunch of other centers. Okay. When pain fibers come up, right, from the periphery, when you have pain, what do you have? Increased heart rate. We have increased breathing rate. Sometimes we feel sick. Sometimes we need to pee or poo, right? So why? Because I'm activating my reticular formation. So it's not this scary thing. It's just another structure that controls autonomic function. Okay? All of your autonomics are going to be driven from your reticular formation. The reticulospinal pathway does autonomics and extensors. That's its job. Okay? So you have the thalamo, hypothalamo, reticulospinal pathway. That's your autonomic pathway, guys. It's driven unilaterally from one side of your cortex. Okay? That's why, do you remember a couple years ago when Nintendo came out and then they had that other thing, I forget what it was called, but you had all these kids, young kids, that were di diagnosed with all this hyperkinesis and even young kids were dying of like heart attacks. Do you remember this in the, in the media? The reason was, <clears throat> was because the stimulation that's occurring visually from these games was exciting different sides of the brain. I'll give you an example. The right side of your brain okay, controls how fast your heart beats. The left side of your brain controls how strong your heart beats. If you have a disparity between those two, you could potentially have problems. Okay? And this isn't like crap that I made up. Okay? This is like in a book. I can show you references. Okay? Ron Hugdow would be a good one. Joseph Halish would be another one. Okay? But this is stuff. It's driven unilaterally. So I have contractility and rate on two separate sides. Well, think about this. Everybody on this side of the room, I'm stimulating their right, okay, temporal lobe, their right, the right side of their brain. Everybody on this side of the room, when I'm standing right here, I'm stimulating them equally. But when I'm standing over here, now I'm stimulating their left side of the brain. Wow. If autonomic pathways are unilateral, okay, then if you're stimulating one side all the time, you're going to get more autonomic output for whatever the functions happen to be on that side of your body than they are on the other side of the body. You ever take somebody's blood pressure and their blood pressure is different on one side or the other? Yeah, why is that? Oh, it's because the artery is a little longer on that side. Oh, yeah? How come I take it at your ankles and it's not always like that? The reason is, is because cortically, okay, one side of your brain, because you're right hand or left hand dominant generally, or one side of your brain, is more active than the other. Your autonomics are more active on one side. That's all. Is it sympathetic or is it parasympathetic? I don't know. Is it yawn? Is it yin? It depends. What's the state of the neuronal pool? I don't know. Okay? But that's ultimately what's going to determine what the outcome is. So autonomic function. Think about that when you're sticking needles in people. Okay? What they found is that like, when you stick needles in peripherally and you just leave them alone in extremities, is that pretty much stimulates the parasympathetics. When you stick them in centrally in the core, that pretty much stimulates the sympathetics. However, if I manipulate the needle and wiggle it around and shove it in and out and, or use a plum star needle or something like that because I don't like the guy. He's got really crappy insurance, right? You're hitting him with a plum star needle, right? That's the one with like a billion little daggers on the edge of it. Then it's exactly the opposite effect. Peripheral stimulation causes sympathetic and central stimulation causes parasympathetic. Okay? It's also going to have some degree of unilaterality. Input on this side is going to affect autonomics on this side and vice versa. Start thinking about this when you're seeing your patients. Start thinking about it when you're looking at their tongues. Or I would encourage you to dust off your ophthalmoscope and start looking at people's eyes, at the vessels inside their eyes. Okay? The ophthalmic vessels. You can have a profound influence on what you do to the patient by looking at their eyes. I'm not talking about iridology. I'm talking about looking at the vessels inside, the retinal vessels. The VA ratio should be one to one. The arteries and veins should be the same. A lot of times what you're going to see is the veins look big, the arteries look small. That's because they have too much sympathetic vasoconstriction going on on one side. Okay? We better yin them a little bit on that side to get them to come down cortically, right? So we're not making them too excited. All right, enough of that. Thank you.